In this video, we're gonna make use of our browser tools to debug our client script. So I'll be using my Chrome debugger tools for debugging purpose. Debugging is just a process of finding the errors in your script and fixing them within your script. So to open the developer tools, press function F12. Right now I can see a sources tab, which has three different sections here. There is an another way to open this developer tools. You can just right click on the current page and just click on inspect. And if you end up on the elements page or console, you can just click on the sources tab. So on the sources tab right now, we have three different sections. The first section is a navigator pan where this contains all the different files which are required for this particular page in the vendor page. And the middle section is nothing but our code section. We'll discuss about the code later. On the right hand side, we have the third section which has all the debugger tools. So before debugging this particular script, let's go to the script. So right now I have a client script which has a one single entry point called as page in it. The first line of code is a debugger keyword. This debugger keyword is used to pause the script execution whenever the browser debugger tool finds this key and it will completely pause the execution of this particular function. So after debugger keyword, I have a declaration for variable called message as a message called page keyword and I'm logging it using log.debug and console.log and also I'm trying to call a custom function and the function name itself is again a custom function. Just have two lines of code. I'm also trying to log the custom message and once this custom function is called the next line of code is trying to set the company name value with the message which I have declared globally as Sweet Script Studios. So I have already uploaded this particular client script in my HUT account. So this is the script record which I have created for this client script and I have deployed this on a vendor record. To test our client script I'm going to open my debugger tools by clicking F12. Now to test my vendor record, I'm going to navigate to list, relationships, vendors, and I'm going to click on new. Since we have placed the debugger keyword in our page in it function, the page in it would have triggered now and it will stop the execution of our code. The debugger keyword has paused our script execution of this particular page in it, and we can clearly see the company name has not been set with some values. So we have the value which is called as Script Studios to be set under the company name field but that is not happening because our debugger keyword has paused this particular script with the page init function. So as I said before we have this three different sections on this source tab. So let's close this navigator section by clicking on this. On the right hand side we have all the different tools which are available for our debugging purpose. So now let's go one by one. Let's discuss about breakpoints. So let's click on the line number 39 and line number 44 and line number 50 and also line number 47. So what are these breakpoints? So breakpoints are the point of the code where the debugger will automatically pause the execution of the script and which will allow us to examine all different types of variables and their values. In short, I can say debugging purpose. So on the right hand side, you can see this under this breakpoints. We have four different breakpoints on line 39, 44, 47 and 50 which we selected so far. And there's a checkbox. If I don't want to temporarily pause this execution on line 39, I can uncheck this checkbox. In the same way, I can do for other lines as well. If I don't want to use this breakpoint line 47, I can click on this into mark where it is going to remove my breakpoint. Right now, I have four different breakpoints on line 39, 44, 50, and 59. And we have currently paused in line 36 because of this debugger keyword. And let's discuss about this watch. So right now, let's say I want to keep a watch on this particular variable called message. So I'm going to copy this variable name called message and I'm going to click on this plus under watch and place this variable name here and I click enter. Right now, you can see the message variable does not contain any value assigned. It's just because we have added a breakpoint in line 39 and we are currently still in line 36. We haven't proceeded further. So let's proceed with the line 39. So I'm going to click on this resume script execution. So right now we are in the line 39 and we have not completed this line execution. So I'm going to click resume one more time. Line 39 has been executed and we can see the value for message variable, which is page unit triggered. Now let's say I'm going to refresh this page. Let's say I'm going to click function F5 where my execution will happen one more time and the page unit will get triggered. Keep your eye on this message variable, which says currently not available. And we can see now it has been showing as undefined because we are starting the execution from first. So now let's try one more time and click resume. And we are on the current line, which is line 39, which is not even executed now. So let's proceed further with the execution by clicking resume. 
So to track our execution of this particular script from one breakpoint to another breakpoint, we can either make use of these buttons which are available on top of this debugger tools and we can also click on this icon which is present beside the paused in debugger. So right now we have four different breakpoints. So let me click on this resume script execution. So when I click on this resume script execution, you can clearly see it has been paused on the next line which is line number 13. And if I just click one more time on our resume script execution, it's going to stop on our next breakpoint which is line 44 which is calling a custom function so let me give one more time and you can see it has clearly entered into the custom function where the breakpoint has been added with line 59 after the line 59 we have one more breakpoint which is line 50 it's gonna stop or pause on that particular line and after this we don't have any more breakpoints so in this case it's gonna complete the script execution and it's gonna display the company name as with script studios so we can see it has completed the script execution. So I have just refreshed this page one more time in order to explain all the different tools which are available in this debugger mode. So now let's talk about the first one which is called as step. And if I click on the step, it is going to take to the next statement of our code or the next line of our current code. Right now we're in the line 36. So if I'm going to click on the step, we are in the line 39 where we have declared our variable called message. Now if I just click one more time, it's going to take me to the line 40. And right now we are in the line 40 and if i just click one more time it's going to take me to that particular log.debug api function so let me just click on that now we can clearly see it has taken me to that particular function log.debug which is debug function which we did not add anything in our code but this is coming from a native switch script api which is log.debug if i just keep on repeatedly take particular step it's going to go through each and every single line of that function and it's going to complete that all the lines execution and it's going to come back where we started so let me just click on this resume so that it will go and stop in our next breakpoint. So we can see once I click resume, it has come to my next breakpoint. So let's discuss on the next icon, which is step over next function call. So this is similar to our uh, previous icon, which we discussed, which is called a step. And the reason why we have to use this particular icon is to avoid going through each and every function call. So for example, last time when we used the step, it went through each and every line of this particular log.debug API. So we can avoid that by using this particular step over function call. Let's say for example, I'm going to click on this icon, step over next function call. So we can see it stopped on line 39. And if I just click one more time, stops on line 40. And then if I just click one more time, it stops on line 40. This time, we can clearly see it has not even entered within the log.debug API function. So on the other hand, I have another line, which is line 44, which is again a function call, which is custom function call. If I don't want to see what is going to happen within this function call, I just need to remove this breakpoint so that I don't want to stop in this breakpoint. Since I have a breakpoint, if I just go with this particular icon, it's going to call that particular function call and it's going to show me that particular breakpoint. And if I just click one more time on this icon, it's going to go with the next line and the next line, which is line 61, closure of this custom function, and it comes back to our line 47 which is the next line in our current code so if i don't have any breakpoints here it would not even enter this particular custom function so let's say that one more time so i'm going to click function f5 to start from the beginning so that my page gets triggered and the debugger will pause the execution of this current script i will uncheck the breakpoint within our custom function call so i will make use of this step over next function call so let me click on this right now we are in line 39 line 40 41 44 and this time my expectation is go to 47 and that is happening so it has skipped this particular custom function which means it has run the custom function internally but we are not going in detail about this custom function all right now let's discuss about these two icons which is step into and step out step into is similar to our step function but there is a big difference with step into and step we'll not go in detail about this difference right now let's say i want to go in detail about this log.debug api function call let's say i'm going to use this icon step into so i'm going to click on the step into now it's going to stop in the line 39 because of the breakpoint and let's say i'm going to move into line 40 so right now we are in the line 40 when i click on this icon step into so if i just click step into at this point it is going to take me to this particular function or the api of this log.debug so let's click on the step into right now we are inside the function called debug so now I have entered inside this log.debug function. Let's say I don't want to see all the different lines of this function or whatever the nested functions are there. I just want to continue the execution and step out of this particular debug. 
I'm gonna click on the step out. So which is gonna take me back to this particular line, which is line 41 now. So let's say I'm gonna click step into now. And right now we are in the another function called which is custom function called. So I want to see all the lines on this particular custom function. I can just go through that function call by clicking on step into. I'm gonna click on step out. It's gonna take me back to the next line which is line 47. Next to the step icon, we have another icon called as deactivate breakpoints. So when I click this deactivate breakpoints, you can notice that temporarily it disables all the breakpoints in one shot. If I just toggle it one more time, it just activates all the breakpoints. There are other options here like the scoop, call stacks and all these stuffs, but these are all not required at the moment. And maybe we can make use of this local variable. Right now if you see, we have the script context which is an argument for this page read function. So let's say I'm going to expand this. I can see this current record which has all the related APIs of this current record object and this mode is currently showing me the mode as create for this vendor record. So once you're done with the debugging of your client script using your Chrome debugger tools, make sure to remove this keyword called debugger so that it will not pause your script execution at the next time when you run.